Well, if you've been itching and ready to get some plantings in, we are here to help you. We've got some great ideas from Haley Giambalvo. She is the owner of Native Backyards and she's here to help. It's nice to see you. Thanks nice for coming in. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about this because you are a master naturalist. Correct. What does that mean? So it is a program for volunteers that are dedicated to conservation efforts around Texas. We okay. go through 40 hours of training all about Texas ecology. So we learn about our local wildlife, our native plants, our geology, all things um, related to our local ecosystems okay. that we can um, conserve. I think that's yeah. fantastic. And of course, a lot of people want to start planting things right now, but we have to be smart about what we plant here in Texas. Absolutely. Because if you're like me, <laughs> you're gonna kill it. Uh, I do a little bit better with plants like this that are a little bit more hardy because yes. they're easy easier to take care of, right? For sure. These plants, our native Texas plants, have been growing here in nature for thousands and thousands of years. Okay. So they have thrived without us pampering them, fertilizing them, watering them. So if these are kind of no-fail plants. Like, oh. they are hard to kill. These, these are, are my kind you. of plants. I love it. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about what you brought okay. in this morning. Tell me what it is Absolutely. and why it's good. Okay, so this is an example of a native plant that you might kind of skip at the nursery because it's not full of pretty blooms. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a wonderful perennial shrub called American Beautyberry that okay. thrives in the shade. I know a lot of us have shade in our yards where it's hard to grow things. This is going to get four or five foot tall, and starting in late summer, it'll be covered with magenta berries that are really beautiful okay. and that mockingbirds love to eat. So a lot of these plants are some of the very nice. best plants to bring pollinators, butterflies, bees, and birds to your yard. So that okay. is a great one. Okay. Uh, the next one is called Zexminia, and this is a really kind of loosely sprawling shrub that will be covered with these pretty yellow blooms okay. all through the summer. Doesn't need much water, and butterflies will, will flock to this as well as goldfinches. They like to eat the seeds. So you'll see them on there eating the seed heads. Of That's very cool. I love yeah. plants that bring in the wildlife. Oh, these will bring yeah. your yard to life. Okay. Absolutely. What do we have um, over here? This is an example of a native uh, grass. We have some really beautiful ornamental grasses, which I think are kind of underutilized in our gardens, but add a really nice beautiful element. They okay. sway in the breeze, they're kind of airy. This is called Mexican feather grass, so okay. it's native to far west Texas, but it does well here in San Antonio. Okay. Um, so I love that. Um, and then this pretty purple flower here is called Greg's Mist Flower. And I think if there's one Texas native plant you go to the nursery and buy this spring, make it Greg's Mist Flower because... Greg's Mist Flower, yes, okay. Yes, it will bloom from now until fall and it will. you will have butterflies in your yard every day particularly oh, queen butterflies, which okay. are similar to monarchs. They um, are attracted to that plant. Okay, what's this? And then this last one is rock rose. It has these beautiful pink kind of hibiscus looking flowers. It will be blooming in the heat of the summer when all your re the rest of your plants are looking sad. It come August, you know, when we, we haven't had rain for a long time. It is thriving. It'll be covered in flowers. So we can have beautiful plants in the garden that won't die. They're perfect for San Antonio. You just have to choose the right one. Absolutely, yes. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about your book because, I mean, I've been living here 23 years and I still can't get it right. So if you need more extra information, what can you find in the book? Yeah, I wrote this book for people like myself that may have never really heard of the concept of native plants. You know, five years ago, I, I loved gardening, but I never thought about what was native, what wasn't, and why that is important. So it talks a lot about the benefits of native plants, how you can find them at the nursery, um, how you can choose the best ones for your yard, which ones will attract um, butterflies and bees and, and different wildlife and uh, just gives you kind of a quick quick start guide a okay. manual to get started okay in your garden what's a tip for us when we are looking for plants I mean I try to read the little it's the tricky. little stick mm -hmm. in the in the plant I read the side oftentimes there's not enough information you're right um, I would recommend going to one of our locally owned nurseries here in San Antonio we okay. are lucky to have two all Texas native nurseries here one is called Paula natives the other is called the nectar bar okay and also um, rainbow gardens which has two locations mm -hmm. in town they both have nice sections of native plants so okay. I would recommend starting there if you go to some of the more big box stores, they tend to not carry as many and they're very so they're, they're harder to find. So Good that would be tip. My okay. Where can we get the book? Uh, you can get it on Amazon. Okay. Uh, just search for native plant gardening. Um, and I also have an Etsy shop called Native Backyards where you can get it there as well. Good deal. Well, Haley, thank you so much sure. for coming on this morning and sharing all this great information with us. If you'd like to know a little bit more about Haley and Native Backyards, check out the website, nativebackyards.com. And be sure you're following her on social media at Native Backyards.